we thank you for joining us. We are uh, we're recording this for our friends at uh, Germantown High School, Rosa Scott, and Ruben High School. I got a room full here at Velma Jackson, and we were just watching some videos about the agriculture department at Heinz Community College, looking out at the Kendall Complex in Raymond. Um, and I know you deal with a lot of that same stuff. Um, but we're joined by Dr. Carla Turner Bailey of Heinz Community College, um, and uh, it's hard to believe that it was uh, ten years, ago, uh, eleven years ago that I was starting as a student teacher walking in your room and you didn't know I was coming until the day I came. So I will never forget your face that day. Um, but we both come a long way since then. Um, yes. We're in the agriculture, uh, food and natural resources career cluster here in our college career readiness class. And I know you are a very involved in the, uh, in the, uh, in the agriculture industry here in the, in the, uh, the metro area and doing a lot of great things at Heinz. And I'll let you um, talk about all that and we'll, we'll have some questions for you, but, uh, I, I know you're going to say, as you always say, without agriculture, we would be hungry, hum, homeless, and naked. So that's it's, right. one, it's an industry that's never going to go away. It's, and we just saw some clips of some of the technology and geospatial and simulations that is being used. So it's not just the uh, break your back work anymore. There's a lot of technology involved in place, all kind of places for women and people of all ethnicities um, in, this, uh, in this field. Yes, definitely. Um, well, um, as I've been introduced a little bit, my name is Dr. Carla Turner Bailey, and I am the agriculture science instructor for Heinz Community College. I teach both at the Raymond and Utica campus where we have offer agriculture classes. Um, as I was told that my speech, without agriculture, you would be hungry, naked, in the dark, oh. and you, you wouldn't have anything and make it so. Um, agriculture encompasses everything from what our neighbors in the metro are experiencing with uh, issues with water um, that, that comes under the agriculture umbrella. Some people think, well, that's a science. Well, agriculture is a science. It's the practicing of, of, of farming, cultivating, conservation. You have it. Um, my story of who I am and how I came to be. So um, from the time I was about four years old, I started uh, farming with my grandparents um, out here in Larned, Mississippi. Um, and I live not too far from the farm that they, that they own. And I was right there along with my grandparents. They, they were my babysitters, but they put me to work early and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it so much that I wanted it to be my career. Um, going through um, middle school and high school, I was introduced to 4-H. And, um, and during that introduction of 4-H, I was able to um, become a, a student of livestock showing. So I showed livestock. Uh, I, I had uh, swine as well as cattle that I showed. And it's something that I just enjoyed. Also, before that time, my mom, who was also a farmer and an educator, she decided, you know, that that's one of the things that we were going to do when she moved her and my husband, her and her father and my father moved back here from New York, is that they would farm as a supplemental income. So we grew up not only farming at our grandparents' home, but farming at our, our home as well. So um, I developed that passion, that love, that interest, and um, it was all around me. And I just pushed into it. I knew that when I went to high school that's what I wanted to take. And, and luckily it was a blessing that um, the high school that I went to, Raymond High School, did have an agriculture program. And I had some great agriculture teachers that I uh, attribute my education passion for agriculture to them because they were great teachers. Um, I showed my entire high school career and I wanted to be a farmer. I just wanted to do that full time. That was going to be my claim to fame. That was going to be the place where I was going to um, have my financial security, I thought. And then I realized during my studies that um, I couldn't do that. If I didn't have the blessing of being um, gifted hundreds of acres or property to be a farmer full time, it was one of those things that I wasn't going to be able to do. So I would have to supplement it. I went on to Heinz Community College. I'm now the teacher in the program that I attended so many years ago and graduated from. I was a pre-agriculture major, which, a tra which is a transfer area. So I transferred to Mississippi State, uh, major in agriculture economics, with a uh, double major in business administration. 
I thought I wanted to go into the business side of it. I was fighting this journey in me. Like I, I've told this story many times that both of my parents are educators. Uh, and it was one of those things that it kind of was destined to be. Um, I did not want to be a teacher, but I always was a teacher. I always taught people things that I enjoy. So I went on to um, Mississippi State. I got a master's degree in forestry with emphasis in environmental policy and management. And I end up starting to teach uh, right about that time that I got my master's. And there is a need for agriculture teachers in the state of Mississippi. We need people who are going to continue to teach in our middle schools and high schools. Um, what's going on, what is needed, what the um, current trends are. Because like it was said, it's the, it's, agriculture is a business that's not gonna go away. Um, I, when I began my teaching, I've been tw teaching now 20 years. Um, I did 17 in the classroom of high school and now I am a collegiate professor. So I'm excited and I love it. I got my PhD in agriculture science. That area is um, very, very wide opening, so I can teach just about every subject. I have to be uh, up to date on everything that's going on. I teach everything from ag economics, ag marketing, um, agriculture accounting, animal science, soil science, plant science, um, you name it, I teach it. So um, I really enjoy it. Um, that's from my professional standpoint, from the what I do for my uh, eight to five job. When I get home, I have my own farm, um, Turner Farms. We produce, uh, we have, we raise livestock. We have uh, rabbit, from, we do rabbit farming. I have over 200 chickens. I just got in a, um, a stock of about 45 new chicks that I have in a brooder. Um, I just put about 25 on the ground that I raised from a day old. And for the first time on my farm, I've been, up, I used to incubate my own eggs right there at the house. Um, but this year I had hens who actually set and I didn't bother them and they're raising. So we have our very first um, Turner Farm uh, raised and hatched hens that, that, that they, they raised themselves, which I'm very excited about. Wow. Um, besides that, we have uh, sheep, goat, um, I don't have any pigs right now. I'm looking to do that, but I want to do it in a more of a, a more sanitary way because pigs can be very messy. Um, but that's me. That's what I do. And my children, they love it. My children, they love being outside. Uh, we do shooting sports. I'm very active with 4-H and FFA in the local area, um, as well as my collegiate clubs that I'm getting those students involved in. And um, just a, a little background about the agriculture industry for those who may not know, it encompasses everything from the stores you go to on a daily basis, those products that are made have to come from some standard or some beginning with agriculture, from the um, tea that we drink. Uh, I'm a pure leaf person. I like pure leaf, of course. They're growing tea. Uh, we're growing um, various things, cocoa, and we're, uh, you love for those chocolate lovers. And, for the individuals who um, are milk drinkers, of course, milk does not come from Walmart or Kroger. It comes from Macau. And um, Mississippi used to be huge in dairy. Right now, Mississippi is number one in our forestry. Poultry is right there behind it. Um, our forestry industry is huge. We have a logging program at Heinz where students can actually um, get a certification in little as seven months. And they put you to work after seven months Wow! in the logging industry. And so it's huge. Uh, there are so many aspects. I have students who are in my program who want to be artificial inseminators. That's something that we teach. Um, we don't give the certification, but you get all of the training that you need to go ahead and get that certification. Um, so is there so many things that is such a vast area um, of agriculture is from A to Z. So you name it. But people don't realize also that um, zoology can be a part of agriculture. If you go through an animal science program, you can work for our zoo. So there are many, many aspects. I want to kind of stop and see if there's anything specific that needs to be answered. Yeah. And, and, all, and you mean you mentioned, you know, you went to Heinz in the Mississippi State, but it's important to understand there are multiple areas of entry in agriculture. You know, you mentioned a, a certification program. The, there's some uh, the vet tech is a two year program associates or you can transfer to university. 
And especially with us coming from a small school, it's important to understand that the goal of Heinz or, or, any, or any community college is to put you in a four-year university. So That's just right. if you go to a community college, doesn't mean you're not going to go to a four-year university. And we just watched the video with Heinz talking about they had the two plus two program with both Mississippi State and Alcorn. So they partner with those departments to put you in those departments. Yes. So um, one thing that is very important um, for those students who may want to go to an 1890 uh, 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 school, which are HBCUs that were developed around that time. So we have Alcorn here in the state, which is the 1890 school. There are scholarships that will pay for your entire education. I had a young man this past semester who um, finished my program. He graduated. He uh, was from, he graduated from Hazelhurst High School. And he was here for only a semester because he was a dual enrolled student wow. while he was in high school. So he was here. He went on. He's now at Alcorn. He applied for the um, the uh, 1890 scholarship, which is a full ride, full full tuition, full room and board. They they place you in internships as well as give you books and a computer. And wow. when you get through, you're about 99 percent chance going to be placed in the workforce and probably with the USDA, which is a huge employer and it's a federal federal job. So those opportunities that are out there are huge. That you did mention our programs, we have a poultry science program at Heinz, a meat merchandising program, meat merchandising those individuals who might want to work um, in the meat industry, anywhere from working for Tyson Foods, um, Sanderson Farms locally, but there are places that you can go that are not local. Um, Excel Foods, which is huge in the processing of um, our beef as well as swine, and they do it nationally. Um, as well as we do have the uh, Precision Agriculture Program, which we do drones here at Heinz, there's a drone program. And then aviation and transportation falls up under our umbrella as well here at Heinz. Yeah, and that's important. You, you, and I was, that was my next question was about, um, it's important to understand the technology that goes into this now because um, uh, companies want to save money in the crop producing and they want to be able to, to be efficient. And another, another area of, uh, in agriculture, and we watched a video on this yesterday, are mechanics and engineers. Because, yes. Because with all the, the food processing and these specialized equipment, there has to be people to maintain it. There has to be, pay, there has to be people to operate it. And that's not just something uh, that, you, that you can pick up at, a, at an auto body shop. You know, that's very specialized training that people that want to get into a, a mechanic type field can really get into and make a lot of money. Huge. So um, you're mentioning that with um, um, we have a diesel technology program here at Heinz, which also falls up under that same umbrella. And with that diesel technology program, we also have a uh, partnership with John Deere, where we're placing individuals with John Deere to be their, their technicians, their, their mechanics. John Deere cannot keep enough qualified individuals to fulfill the work demand that they have. Um, and one good thing about a lot of the agriculture industry um, partnerships that Heinz has, not only with Heinz, but in ag agriculture in general. If you get a job with most of these companies, they will pay for your certifications. They will pay for your advancement in degrees. And that is all taken care of while you work. So who can better off be, be debt free, getting a free education and being able to work while you're doing it at the same time? Absolutely. Um, now, Obviously, we got to talk a little bit about Heinz um, because you're obviously on, on both campuses. But uh, what, what can students e expect? Because uh, Heinz Utica is uh, an anomaly because it is a community college that has HBCU designation. So they could get an HBCU experience in community college. Um, Definitely. And, and, and so, it's not, but it still, you know, it still offers a lot of the same great things that you have at Utica. So we, we need to talk a little bit about uh, the Heinz Community College experience. Oh, so here at, at the Utica campus, we are HBCU. There are only two community colleges in the, in the state that are considered HBCUs, but we are the HBCU. 1903 is when we were founded. So when you come here, you have all of the student life that kind of associates with the HBCU experience. You see a lot of Greek life on campus, not from the student standpoint, but we as the faculty members and the staff who are members of Greek organizations, we try to go ahead and in um introduce our students to that world. Uh, we also, you know, what we give a lot of experiences to um, other HBCUs. Thus, for me in the agriculture standpoint, I have a direct relationship and contact with um, 
all corn where we're constantly working with working together. We're, we're actually taking a trip on Tuesdays, all corn. And so we, with those experiences, of course, we do coordination like typical uh, HBCU. We um, also have students here where we're constantly doing things with our student services. So with our student services, our students are constantly involved in something at least four, three to four nights a week or three, three to four afternoons when we're keeping our students engaged in the HBCU-like um, experience. So it's wonderful here at Heinz and Utica. So if you're looking for a home, and this is a, a home for our students, come, come to Heinz and Utica. Yeah, and, and, and also, and, and Raymond has a great atmosphere as well. If they, if they wanted to, you know, uh, they didn't want the HBCU experience, but they still wanted the community college experience. Raymond um, Raymond is one of the few community colleges that actually has a few things around campus. You know, they got the, a few places to eat. Um, you're, you're not that far from Jackson. You know, you're actually close to Walmart, unlike the other community colleges. But it's yes. still very, very affordable education. And uh, if what we've seen on the videos, you know, uh, at the Kendall Complex out there at Raymond, great areas to train. Um, and even if you're not going into agriculture, uh, Heinz and Raymond all, also offers a lot for anyone that wants that uh, community college experience at a great rate. And at a, uh, especially with our students coming here from a small school to still get that one-on-one -on -one experience in a, uh, a, in a college atmosphere. Well, one thing I can say for students who come from, you know, small areas where you don't want to commute because of the, the distance, um, Raymond and Utica are the only two campuses that have housing. So um, and in our housing department, our housing departments are very, very good and making sure our students are taken care of. Um, when the Raymond side, I like I say, I, I, I have a dual role. So I'm at both colleges uh, throughout throughout the week. And it is I was a, I'm a graduate of the Raymond campus. And there is a huge home and family field at both campuses and with and a lot of activities going on at all six campuses. But because those two have housing, their activities are more um, involvement of the students because they're like constantly having something going on with our student organizations, um, our resident life as well. Yeah, and it's really cool because um, you have the basketball on the Utica campus and all the other sports on the Raymond campus. So it's, you know, there, there's always something to do on both campuses. So, um, you know, I, I encourage anybody that's with me now and watching later uh, to really look at Heinz Community College. It's got a, a lot of great things to offer. Um, but uh, I do want to also talk about with, you know, it's, it's important to understand with agriculture, especially the need for these kids to get as high a training as they can in these te in, uh, in, in technology, because except for maybe the military, I, right now, agriculture has some of the most advanced technology in the world because yes. it's so, so necessary um, for not only the health of the of the of the of the public but the safety of the public and just the efficiency and uh the profit of uh, these companies because like you said you got to grow it but you got to sell it too and you got it but you've got to be efficient in that and you talked about the we have a drone program here in madison county schools at our votech center because it is such a growing growing field yes so um people don't realize that right now with um like all technology is 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 that you need to make sure you get in where you fit in did you say something? I was I was talking to the students. You're good. I'm sorry. So uh, go back to having technical. All right, we're good. Okay, so with um with our people don't realize that with agriculture we have issues now where there is no there is not a person that is in the um, tractor. You know we have unmanned tractors that are actually being uh, driven by technology. You're GIS and GPS system um, are telling them what points need to be um, plowed and where fertilizers need to be dropped to enhance growth of, of plants. So and then we have issues where um, our, our animals are being um, artificially inseminated and, and ma maintained by computers, the computer data. So the technology, technology piece is very huge. Learn as much as you can while you're in high school because a lot of students don't. They come to college and they think that, um, of course, in a community college, one of the most beneficial things that I think are really, really wonderful is that our educators here are committed to continuing to teach you. So yesterday I had students who uh, we were working on Excel sheets and you're doing various things with um, accounting and they didn't realize or know how to do certain things. I'm here as an educator to continue that instruction. So not only am I teaching you agriculture, but I'm teaching you how to utilize technology that some people may think is very basic. But 
Um, technology is huge. Drones. We uh, we have whole uh, pieces where people are maintaining their cattle herds with a drone, yeah. going out checking their cattle in, on a daily basis to see what's going on and doing a head count with drone technology. Yeah, and and uh, you know, I know they love the TikTok and the Snapchat and all that's fun and all, but it's important to learn. All, uh, all, all these uh, all these technological systems and especially in technological fields right now they don't care about you having a computer science degree they compare they care about you having the uh, experience to run these software programs so yeah uh, the technology aspect and engineering aspect of agriculture is ever growing and they are in huge need of agriculture and technological specialists because it is such a uh, a fast te- uh, technological growing field um, but I do have some uh, questions from the students and all these are okay. nice um, so this first one is Kaylee Luckett, and she asked, do you feel like before you were introduced to agriculture, when you were very young, you were destined to be this when you grew up? I think I was. I think I was, I was destined to, for agriculture. Um, of course, um, things that are within our heart um, and our passion, my purpose, uh, my, the position I was put in, being that my grandparents were my um, caregivers until I was about five. Um, yeah, I think I was destined to it. But the thing about it is that when I, I embraced my destiny, I went full force with it. So um, one thing we didn't talk about is what all I'm certified in. I am oh, yeah. a CDL licensure. Um, I can drive trucks as well as I have a certification in welding. Um, because of my secondary training as an ag teacher, I learn welding. I actually learn to do um, plumbing and electrical. Now I'm not certified in those two areas, but I'm able to teach the basics because with agriculture, I want my students to be well-rounded. I want my students to be able to say that they can take care of themselves if something happens. Thus, the pandemic. My students, you know, I was telling them that they would be able to, you know, grow their own food and be able to take care of themselves in any situation that that it, um, is posed to them, so yes, I think I was destined. Yeah, and and, and, I, and I can't we would the we didn't mention that either that the trades are also a big part of agriculture as well, um, because obviously the stuff has to be shipped. You you know you got to have reliable people to move the uh, to move the uh, and move materials and the uh, and the food, and the the welding part. You know when it comes to fixing this farm equipment, that's a great certification to have, and that's something you can get at Heinz. So. Yes. The, the trades can transfer to agriculture as well, but though we have uh, plenty of young people that are interested in that, and there's always going to be a need for that in the uh, agriculture field. So um, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I forgot all about that as well. And they, they go hand in hand. So uh, an agriculturalist is a person who is basically someone who's going to have a, a hand in everything. Most agriculture educators um, slash farmers or farmers in general have multiple um, areas that they're able to uh, be successful in, whether it's welding, um, plumbing, electricity, because electricity, because it, at times when we have to do things on our farm, sometimes we can't wait for a certified individual to come in and do it. We have to cap off water when it, when issues arise. We have to maybe uh, run an extra circuit to be able to get power to a, a barn. So um, those things are very, very important. The trade skills people don't realize um, are, are huge and, and extremely important in our times. And remember that um, our uh, first line workers, um, those were the individuals who had to continue working during the pandemic. Some of those individuals were in the food industry, a lot of them. Yeah, and I also think it's important to understand because, um, uh, and, and I go over this over and over again, that all these ACT scholarships and grants that are available um, at the community college also apply to the trade programs. It yes. is not just in the academic programs. Yeah, the academic programs, you know, I know uh, Heinz, uh, the, the baseline is a 23 to start getting those uh, huge tuition, huge tuition discounts along. And that's not even counting the grants available through Mississippi. But that would apply to a trade program as well. So you know, you hear kids say, well, I, I don't want to go, I don't want to get a degree. You can still go learn a trade with a great ACT score and Heinz Community College will honor that scholarship for you to learn that and get immediately into the workforce at 20, 21 years old. That's right. Um, now this is Aiden Owens and he asked, how long does it get to take to your level of knowing and teaching agriculture and how do you reach and how, and do you, uh, how long did it take you to reach your dream as a young girl? Mm. Ah. As a dream as a young girl, I always wanted to start my own farm, um, cattle farming. And so when I was 
13 years old, I was able to sign a USDA farm loan um, for myself, by myself. Nobody had to co-sign or anything. Oh. And um, it's a youth farm loan that they give to child, to young people um, to start. And I bought my first herd of cattle um, and I've been going ever since. So achieving that dream was when I was, you know, able, with 13, I was able to start my own part, portion of my farm. Um, through the cattle industry and through USDA support. Um, how long does it take to become an agriculture teacher? So you do typical four years. It's any traditional um, four-year program to become an educator. There's no addition to that. Um, Mississippi State has just recently created a uh, three plus one program where you're, they're kind of guaranteeing you to, to finish your undergrad degree in three years. And that fourth year can be spent getting your master's degree in agriculture education. And they will put you to work because like I said, like uh, most teacher shortages, there are a shortage of agriculture teachers. There are jobs open right now. So it takes about four to five years to get your certification depending on, but you know, the outlook of getting a job in agriculture, the field of agriculture is very, very high. Um, it's just depending on if you're willing to move and, and relocate because some areas um, don't have agriculture um, in relation to others. And it's also, you know, once you get certified, you've got to stay up on this changing technology because yes. technology of agriculture is changing every day. I mean, it's at a breakneck pace. It's up there with the medical industry, with the, with the technology changing. And it's so important to stay up to date on that. So um, just like with a medical field, reading their medical journals, we have the agriculture journals. We have the ag economics and agriculture engineering, as well as um, ag education journals. And I'm constantly subscribing to those and reading those. Sorry, we had some announcements there to uh, interrupt. Uh, now, this is, now, this is a great question. This is London Lots. And she asked, what are the biggest pros and cons of working in agriculture? Because I can think of a big con right off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, I would say for the, the cons, I'll go, I'll go that first. Um, the heat, OK? Mississippi, <laughs> Mississippi heat can be uh, uh, scorching for you, but I found personally that if I get out early to do my work, if it runs into a time where I'm getting hot, then I feel more accomplished versus, you know, you say, oh, I'll have to wait till it, it cools off. In Mississippi, it doesn't cool off, you know, and your animals still have to be fed, your crops still have to be tended, so um, that's a huge con. And then um, another one would be is, say, for instance, what's going on right now with the extent, it, the, the rain. So that's been an issue of I'm not able to um, weed, de weed my, my, my gardens as well as cut my grass down on, on, on my, my lawns like they need to be because of that, which leads to pests. So, I, you know, that's a huge issue and, and pest of all of types. Uh, the pros is that for me, I'm my own boss when it comes to my farm. Um, that's something that I love to do. It's also a great stress reliever. With a lot of things going on in the world, I find peace and solace when I'm outside working with my animals or I'm gardening or I'm working in the fields. Um, my husband will tell you that he could sit on an excavator or a tractor or something of that nature all day long because that's where we find our peace. My husband is an agriculture teacher as well. And so we find peace in that. Um, another pro is, is that it's just you're one with nature. So, I mean, I have a lot of respect for um, nature and individuals who are in agriculture because of, of what they do. Yeah. Um, now, we're almost out of time, but I do have to I have, have just, just two more questions for you. And we haven't really talked about Mississippi State because um, I know they have you're a graduate of Mississippi State. Great agriculture program there. All kind of new technology. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what all Mississippi State has to offer as well, because I know they have a partnership with Heinz Community College. Um, in their agriculture department as well. Okay, so Mississippi State has, has, has our two plus two as well with various portions. Uh, with our forestry, we actually do a little pre-forestry course here and you go on to, med, med, um, to major in and forestry as well. But Mississippi State offers your scholarships. Of course, you have your scholarship with ACT and we have transfer scholarships, which are huge. I was able to go to Mississippi State, excuse me, <clears throat> um, without any, um, on a scholarship, from Miss, I went to Heinz on a scholarship, went to Mississippi State on a scholarship because of my attendance at Heinz through a transfer scholarship. Right. So it's very important. It's a lot of things going on. Um, Mississippi State is offering so many things when it comes to agriculture that, you know, from animal dairy science to poultry science to 
Um, if anybody who's interested in wildlife and fisheries, game being a game board, you know, you can go to school at Mississippi State and they will put you in a training program. For yeah, that. We have, we've actually had a couple of Velma Jackson alumni that have gone through the game warden program now and they are now game warden in Mississippi. Awesome. So the, um, the, the ties that we have to both Mississippi State and Alcorn State University are huge and high. And we utilize them and we don't take them for granted because those ties that we have for those individuals who are interested in um, extending their career and, and their education to the four universities there. But I don't want to say, tell people, uh, make sure people understand you don't have to have that four year degree, but you need to have some levels of certifications to ensure that you're up on what's going on and never stop learning. That was one of the things that was told to us by Andy Gibson's office, who is the commissioner of agriculture just yesterday, never stop learning um, and be teachable because it's very important that your um, employers are looking for that and that you're gonna be able to get those certifications and continue to learn throughout your um, workforce experience. Yeah, and, 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 that's, and that's important. You know, like we said, there are various levels of entry uh, in this cluster yeah. and throughout most clusters, but, um, and I know we're almost out of time, you gotta go, but, um, and we thank you so much for, uh, for coming on our early force today, but you know, uh, you, you're from the learned Raymond area, which is very rural, similar to what we are here in Camden. So you grew up just like everybody here, even though it was on yeah. the other, other side of the metro. Um, you grew up in the country as a young black kid in Mississippi, and you have done amazing things, having three degrees now um, as a, a, a doctor in agricultural science. So even if these kids don't want to go that far in education, if they don't want to go into agriculture, they're coming from the, a, a similar circumstance. But yet you've you've been extremely successful. So how can they follow uh, in the footsteps of someone like you coming from the same the same uh, same circumstances as a kid? I, I want to say you know it's it's important that we we find our passions and our purposes early in life because the earlier you find them, the more um, peace. And I'm losing all these peas. The most more peace is important to you. Um, I was in a training this summer that said that most individuals, especially in today's time, would rather have a tranquil experience at work and be happy, peaceful at work versus making a lot of money. And so you want that time experience. You can be whatever you want to be, okay? But early in life, sometimes we tell our, our students, oh, when you're in college, you have the first year as a freshman to kind of see what's going on. You want, if you want to be, um, the person that's going to retire when you're 50, 55, or less earlier than that, then you need to go ahead and find what your passion and your purpose is now. Um, growing up where I grew up, I grew up, I grew up in a, um, in today's times would be considered a uh, untraditional home, okay? What I mean by that, both parents, I had, my, my both parents had degrees, both parents had advanced degrees. So I had that opportunity. My grandparents though did not, they did not have, they didn't go to high school. So um, going, going through that situation, my mom is the oldest of 14. And she's the only child growing up in Utica, Mississippi, who went on to get a degree from a four-year college. She graduated from Alcorn State and Mississippi College. So um, you can do whatever you want to do. Don't let anybody ever tell you you can't or steal your joy about it. And especially your peers. Don't let your peers um, infiltrate your mind to say that, you can't be or what you want to be. And, and don't, and I used to be ridiculed when I was in school. Why would you want to be a farmer? Why you want to get dirty? You like that? Well, when I smell cow manure, I smell money. Okay. Um, when I see a cat, a cattle truck pass by and I smell this, oh, I said, that's a load of money there. And the, I mean, because that's what I find joy in. And that's what I find passion in. I love it. I just want to say this before I go that our passion in our family that is, is so greatly stemmed in agriculture has led um, my brother to start a business here in Utica, which is called Mississippi Center for Cultural Production, where we combine agriculture and the arts. Yep. And so it's huge. So when you get a chance, look into it. Uh, we offer internships and for children, for students. So if by chance one day you want to come out here, um, we will help you from Camden, Mississippi, or wherever in Madison County to come out here and experience agriculture at, it, at its best. We have a hands-on 17-acre farm. Wow. We have a um, greenhouse that was just installed, and we have an art space and, and an industrial space that we're going to turn into an industrial kitchen. So we're teaching canning. We're teaching students how to cook and prepare various vegetables. Uh, we're teaching students how to um, 
ensure their own livelihood and not be dependent on the on um, the food the food system that we have to go to a store. So that's awesome. And I, yeah, I know. And your family is just incredible. Y'all, I mean, all of y'all just do so many awesome things. So, but Dr. Carla Turner Bailey, thank you so much for joining us. I know you got to get to another meeting now. So, uh, but th but thanks for coming on for us. Great stuff as always. And uh, you know, anytime we have somebody interested in agriculture at Heinz Community College, we'll send them your way. Or we'll just go bother my man Donnie Epting. Yes, yes, definitely. All right, I'll talk to you soon, my friend. Y'all be good. All right. Thank you. Yeah.